This is the family history of Barbara Jane Freelove, my mother. If you wanted to wear a kilt, this would be the pattern you would choose. This is the royal pattern of the House of Stuart. There were six High Stuarts of Scotland. Our story begins with their ancestor, the Sheriff of Shropshire. Alan Fitzflad was a Briton knight. Henry I hired him as a mercenary in his conflicts with his brothers and to control the Welsh border. He was given many lands, including the feudal barony and Oswestry Castle. The origins of the Stuarts starts with him. Walter Fitzalan served as steward to three successive Scottish kings, David, Malcolm IV, and William I. In time, the stewardship became hereditarily held by Walter's descendants. He was the first high steward of Scotland. Alan Fitzwalter accompanied Richard the Lionheart on the Third Crusade. Alan Fitzwalter was the second high steward of Scotland. Walter, third high steward of Scotland, was the first member of the family to use Stuart as a surname. And he was designated of Dundonald. Alexander Stuart accompanied King Louis IX of France on the Seventh Crusade. And he was principal commander when the Scots invaded and conquered the Isle of Man which was then, with the whole of the Western Isles, annexed to the crown of Scotland. Alexander and his three sons are the direct ancestors of the Stuart kings and queens of Scotland and England. James, eldest son of Alexander, was grandfather of King Robert II of Scotland, the first Stuart king of Scots, and thus ancestor of all subsequent Scottish monarchs and of the post-Tudor monarchs of Great Britain. He is our uncle. Walter Stuart was the father of King Robert II of Scotland. He took part in all the wars of Scottish independence between Robert the Bruce and Edward II of England. Marjorie Bruce was the eldest daughter of Robert the Bruce, King of Scots. Marjorie's marriage to Walter gave rise to the House of Stuart. Their son, Robert II, first Stuart King of Scotland, was crowned in 1371 and reigned till his death in 1390. When Edward IV defeated Henry VI and took his crown, the War of the Roses began. After the crown changed hands a couple of times, he regained it, and with his wife, Elizabeth Woodville, Edward reigned in relative peace for the next 12 years. He died suddenly at the age of 40. Edward's sons, Edward V and Richard, Duke of York, were both murdered in the tower. Their sister, Elizabeth of York, married Henry Tudor, Henry Tudor defeated Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth and became King of England and combined the houses of York and Tudor to end the War of the Roses. Their oldest son, Arthur, was heir to the crown of England. He married Catherine of Aragon but their marriage was cut short when he died at the age of 16 from the sweating sickness. Catherine stayed in the Tudor family, however, and she married Arthur's brother, Henry, soon to become Henry VIII, King of England. They had one daughter together, Mary. Also known as Bloody Mary, she ruled with a reign of terror against all Protestants as she was a devout Catholic. Henry had two more children, Elizabeth I, who ruled during the Golden Age of the Empire, and Edward VI, whose reign was cut short by tuberculosis. He died at the age of 16. Henry's sister, Margaret Tudor, became Queen of Scotland when she married James IV, King of Scotland. They are the grandparents of Mary, Queen of Scots. Their son, King James V, married Mary of Guise, and they are the parents of Mary, Queen of Scots. Mary 
Henry's son, James I, was king of England and Scotland. And their royal line continues to this day through Lady Diana's sons, Prince William and Prince Harry. James' son, Charles I, was not a popular king. He was so unpopular that eventually Oliver Cromwell had him beheaded and he took over the government. Oliver Cromwell did not believe in royalty, and when he took over the government, he ruled as Lord Protector, but he was a dictator. Elizabeth Stuart was Oliver Cromwell's mother. She was a direct descendant of Alexander Stuart and his son, Andrew. The restoration of the monarchy in 1660 put Charles II on the throne. He was much beloved by the people. He was known as the Merry Monarch. Charles II's son, James II, took the throne in 1685. He was a Roman Catholic and the last Catholic to sit on the throne of England. He was not very popular and was soon replaced by his daughter, Mary, and her husband, William of Orange. She died of smallpox at the age of 32 and had no children. After the death of her husband, William, in 1702, her sister, Anne, took the throne and she became the first monarch to rule Great Britain. In ill health most of her adult life, Anne passed away in 1714. Like her sister before her, Anne also had no children. Anne's half-brother, James Francis Edward Stuart, laid claim to the British throne with little success. Like his father, James II, James III was a Roman Catholic and therefore, under the new laws, not allowed to sit on the British throne. They called him the Old Pretender. Anne was then succeeded by her second cousin, George I, which began the House of Hanover. He was a descendant of another branch of the Stuart dynasty, started by Elizabeth, Queen of Bohemia. She was James I's daughter. That branch continued all the way on to present day, with Queen Elizabeth II, her son, her grandsons, and her great-grandson. That was the royal line of James, the first son of Alexander. His brother, John Stuart of Banco, the second son of Alexander, was a military commander who fought with William Wallace at the Battle of Falkirk. He commanded his own division, and he was killed in that battle on July 22, 1298. He is the ancestor of Henry Lord Darnley, the husband of Mary, Queen of Scots, and the father of the first Stuart King of England, James I. That was the royal line of John, Lord of Bonkill, second son of Alexander. His brother, Andrew, third son of Alexander, was the great uncle of King Robert II and ancestor of Oliver Cromwell, the Lord Protector. He died in 1350 at the age of 106. Andrew's direct line descends all the way down to us. Andrew's son, Alexander II, was also known as the Fierce because he once killed an attacking lion with a club. His image with a club and lion was added to his family crest. Alexander II's son, John the Scott Engel Stuart, was second cousin to King Robert II. In 1408, he was knighted by King Henry IV. He fought for the English army and died in France at the Battle of Agincourt in 1415. His son, John II, was a favorite of the court. He was knighted in 1420 by King Henry V and given a gilt cup by Queen Catherine at her coronation. Simon Stuart was knighted by King Edward VI. His mother was Cecily Baskerville. She is a direct descendant of William the Conqueror. His grandson, Simon Stuart, settled in Moberly, Cheshire, England. He was the second cousin of Oliver Cromwell's mother. He died in 1651 at Moberly. John Stuart, the third son of Simon, became a Quaker. He died at Moberly in 1695. His son, Joseph, 
came to America at the age of 18 in 1682, sailing from Liverpool in the ship Submission with James Harrison, agent of William Penn. He settled in Chesterfield, Burlington County, New Jersey, near Trenton. He married Alice Wright, and like his father before him, he was also a Quaker. Four generations later, Yehu Stewart moved the family to Melrose Adams, Illinois, approximately in 1850. His granddaughter, Mary Stewart, was married to Zachary Taylor, whose father was Richard Taylor, a general in the Confederate Army, and his grandfather was the 12th President of the United States, Zachary Taylor, my third great uncle. Pictured here with his famous horse, Old Whitey, he would sit atop his horse during battle as bullets whizzed past them. He died suddenly after just serving one year as president. After Mary's husband, Zachary, died, she moved in with my grandparents and brought with her artifacts from the White House, including a railroad spike, which President Taylor always brought with him, just to remind himself of his humble origins. Mary's sister, Diana, also known as Daisy, was my great-grandmother. That's her holding me at the age of 78, with my brother Gene in his cowboy gear, and their dog Zeke. Daisy's son, Zachary, was born in 1895. He is my grandfather. We all called him Da, which in Scotland means father. This is a picture of him in World War I, and after the war, he worked for Brinks, he was also a mason and a master woodcraftsman. Zachary married Catherine Getz, my grandmother. Her family came here in 1900 from Austria, and she graduated from the same grammar school that I did, St. Nicholas, on the south side of Chicago. Their daughter, Barbara Jane, is pictured here at the age of three with her grandmother, Elizabeth Kugler. She migrated to the United States from Weisskirchen, Austria. Barbara Jane lived just down the street from Jerry Barron's. They were childhood sweethearts and eventually they were married. They had four sons. The third son, Jerry Michael, your humble narrator, seen here with his great-grandmother, Daisy Stewart, had three daughters, Catherine, Jordan, and Jessica. 25 generations from Alan Fitzflad all the way to the present. This is the family history of Barbara Jane Freelove, my mother.